One of the markers of love that I mentioned is a willingness to be hurt, but not harmed. Right? So there's a, there's a point at which in a relationship when the person starts to play God. And we move from understanding a person's pain and confronting them about their pain. Look, I know you're hurting and I'm scared about it and I want good for you and I'm not giving up on you. Right? But how do you not give up on somebody well? Well, when we start moving to the God business, we don't give up on them by putting ourselves in a position of being harmed. Does that make sense? We keep on going back and getting slapped. All right. But see, I'm not going to give up on you really means I so trust God with you that I'm, I'm going to keep telling you the truth of what it's like to be with you. And if you keep doing that certain behavior, I'm dishonoring who God made me to be. So I'm not going to be around you. Now you're giving them to God instead of playing God. And it's truly compassionate and merciful and caring to hand them over to God. Does that make sense? And how to do that? Let me show you, let me show you the let me show you the line of doing that. This is what the line looks like. Okay? Okay. So you see, it makes sense, right? And it's the difference between caregiving and caretaking. The difference between being responsible for someone ver versus being responsible responsible towards someone. Okay? Those are just words at first, but being responsible for someone, if you grew up in a world where you didn't grow up just doing these things like playing the piano, like you could play, it means that you grew up in a family like this. Many of us who lost contact with our feelings a long time ago, we grew up believing something that's not accurate. We believe that we made people in bad moods. We believe that we made people act in certain ways. Little bitty fellow like this, you're making people in bad moods. You're making people act in certain ways. In fact, we believe that we made people feel things. We believe we made people happy or made people unhappy, right? Or we believe that we could read. I know what they're saying. I hear their mouth moving, but I know what they mean instead. I hear them say this, but what they really mean is that. We started thinking we were Kreskin or something. Like we, were, we could read minds. And because we were so good at picking up on certain things, we kind of like got support for being good at it. Do y'all get what I'm saying? We started watching people's faces to know what to do. Do y'all relate to that? We start watching people's faces. So, you know, when I was little, I looked for uh, uh, welcome in people's faces. Then I started watching in confusion with what's going on. Then I started watching people's faces to try to figure out what to do. Then I decided all faces are masks and I hid my heart too. Doom, 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 doom. So if you grew up in a world where you believe that you're responsible for other people's feelings then you are a person who's going to have a real difficult time knowing when to simply say, this isn't me. And people who are responsible for other people's feelings become caretakers rather than caregivers, which means they believe they have to take care of other people's feelings for them. You see? Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you become the person that keeps sitting around that self-pitying person who needs to shut up and do some grieving. And you need to be the person who says, you know what? There's nothing I can do for you. You need to do it for you. I remember Sonia told me, and that's embarrassing, but it, it, and it was a thousand years ago. But Sonia told me really a bunch of years ago, she said, look, whatever you're looking for from me, I don't have. You got to go to God. I said, God doesn't have any arms. I don't hear him say anything. He's slow moving. You could say something. You could do something. She said, I don't have what you're looking for. What love? What care? What, what care giving versus trying to fix it again to make my feelings go away? She didn't take responsibility for my feelings. She was responsible towards me as a loving human being. And see, she had to have enough ownership of her heart to tell me, that she's out of the God business. Does that make sense? 
And it's very difficult to learn. How will you know? That's a big question. You'll know based upon how you feel. If you feel a lot of the pressure of should around another person, what am I supposed to do? What should I be doing? What should I be saying? What do they want me to do? What should I? And you're confused around a person. If you're confused around a person, you're around somebody who's confusing. And if you think you're confused and you know what you feel, you're not. They are. And you need to back up. People who are confusing are confusing. If you know your feelings, you don't live confused. You live wondering what to do. But you're not confused. Confusion means all your feelings are globbed together and you, don't, you need somebody to tell you what to do. See, feelings take you to a place of being able to ask for help. Like you're doing because on some level, you felt a feeling called, I don't know an answer to something in some relationships I'm living in that I don't know what to do anything about, right? And as a Christian, I want to maintain caring, and sometimes caring feels harsh. So what was the feeling you had that brought you to the question? And that's a, I'll answer it for you if you want me to help. <laughs> I'll be responsible for you. Now, what's the feeling of the question? you have any idea of these eight feelings? I know I'm putting you on the spot. We can cut it out. It's no big deal. Don't cut it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've been getting hurt and you ask the question, how do I do something? Because you're afraid. Like, how do I do this? I don't know the answer. I don't, what's the answer? This is scary to not know what to do because I care about this person, but my caring has no impact. I'm getting hurt. Is it, is it okay for me to stop getting hurt? Yes. Yes. So your fear, you knew where you were, the pain, the hurt you're in, allowed you to come to the vulnerability of asking a general question that was really for you to know how to live better. Now, does the question, does the answer help you? Okay, and what is, where does it leave you? Okay, and where does it leave you here on this list? I know these are... Okay, glad, relieved. When you think about you changing your behaviors towards this person, whoever it happens to be, and you anticipate what you think this person might do with your newfound God strength, what do you anticipate feeling? Relate? Do you? You promise? You're not making it up. Okay. So if she can be willing to know she's not alone and that the loneliness she's experienced is hers to deal with and she hasn't failed, she needs, she needs to be able to turn to somebody in relationship and say, this is what I'm feeling, even though it doesn't make any sense. That's what I'm feeling. I feel like I failed and I feel like I won't get to have this person in my life anymore, possibly. But you don't have them anyway. Because they're not themselves. They're demanding that you be them for them. Just like I was Sonia. No, Sonia, you do this. I'm not going to do it. You do it. You fix this. Make sense? Yeah. Painful, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? And yet it's glad. So you're glad to be in pain? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, I've heard people in treatment say, I've never hurt so good. I've never hurt so good. <laughs> what would you pay to get rid of that hurt? Uh-uh, I'm, uh -uh, I'm, I'm keeping it. It's worth it. The pain is worth the trouble. 